Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I'm going to do something a little bit different today than normal for a video. I'm going to read a short article to you. Uh, the reason I'm going to read it is because uh, I believe that it is in this article it is perfectly stated and I don't want to make any changes. I certainly could not improve upon this message. I'm taking this article from uh, a newsletter that I get each month from, it's called uh, Grace in Focus. Grace in Focus. Uh, the people who publish this, it's uh, Grace Evangelical Society. There's their mailing address. And the person who heads up that organization is Bob Wilkin. I believe the organization was founded by Zane Hodges, the late Zane Hodges, and now um, Bob Wilkin uh, is the head of the organization. Personally, I, I've never found any organization that is uh, uh, teaching about Christianity, biblical Christianity, that uh, it does a better job than GES. Uh, even I even have a playlist on my channel, a collection of videos produced by GES. So uh, I, I recommend you uh, um, go to their website. It's uh, faithalone.org uh, and uh, take a look at them. And uh, they're an organization you might want to uh, partner with and, and uh, uh, help support. But they, they will send you this new let, newsletter monthly whether you support them or not. But I'm going to read this article. Uh, it's by someone named Sean Lazar. And the title is Cheap Grace or Cheap Law by Sean Lazar. In any debate, the language being used is critical in shaping opinions. Control the language and you can often control the debate itself. On that score, Opponents of free grace theology may have the upper hand. They routinely describe our position as antinomian, easy believism, and cheap grace. Every evangelical has heard of these terms, and everyone knows they are bad. By contrast, few people know the term lordship salvation. I'd like to turn the tables a bit and introduce a new term to describe opponents of free grace. Specifically, I would like to suggest why Lordship theology supports cheap law. What is cheap law, and why should we be wary of it? The term is inspired by the work of Gerhard Ford a Lutheran theologian who wrote extensively about the doctrine of justification by faith alone. Although he did not specifically use the term cheap law, he effectively described the phenomenon and strongly opposed it. Ford helped to show that cheap grace and costly grace preaching, instead of being opposites, are actually synonymous and both should be understood as preaching a cheap law that has nothing to do with God's authentic grace in Christ. So let us begin by understanding the purpose of the law. Ford derived his understanding of the law from the Lutheran reading of Romans and Galatians. Law includes more than the Mosaic law. It includes any and all commandments. If something makes a demand or an accusation, that is law. This includes the Sermon on the Mount, the command to love, the command to repent, or the moral standard written on our hearts and conscience. All of it is law. With that in mind, Ford pointed out how the law demanded holiness, Leviticus 11.45, and blamelessness, Deuteronomy 18.13. If you broke even one commandment, you were guilty of breaking them all, James 2.10.
Paul emphasized that no one could be justified before God by works of the law. Galatians 2.16 Such a course of action was hopeless because it was not the law's purpose. Paul made clear that the law could never give a person life or make them righteous. Galatians 3.21 On the contrary, the law was a ministry of death. 2 Corinthians 3.7 It does not save us from sin, but it gives us knowledge of it. Romans 3.20 Without a law to tell us the difference between right and wrong, sins like coveting would go unnoticed. Romans 7.7 7. Hence, Paul says that the law was actually given to increase sin. Romans 5.20 This was done precisely so that God's wrath could come. Romans 4.15 in other words, the law was not meant to relieve man of sin's burden, but to make the burden unbearable, so as to leave the sinner completely condemned before God. As Ford explained, the law did not stop sin, but only made sin worse. In so doing, the law showed sin to be exceedingly sinful. The law exposed the depth of sin by showing it to be ineradicable by human power. Indeed, the law increased sin so as to bring it into confrontation with its sole remedy, that where sin abounded, grace might much more abound. Hence, the law is not an invitation of cooperation between God and man but an implicit denial that any such cooperation is possible. So far from acting as a condition for receiving God's grace, as cheap law preachers hold, the law is meant to dispel every thought of self-fulfillment, self-aggrandizement, self-progression, and self-deification. The law proclaims the absolute futility of all schemes of salvation by works righteousness. The law slams the door shut on salvation by works and says, go another way. This other way to eternal salvation is nothing other than grace. It is a grace that does not complete or supplement man's works but excludes them entirely. As Paul said, And if grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. Romans 11.6 So what is cheap law preaching, and why is it bad? Cheap law preaching seems pious. It rightly demands obedience to Christ. What could be wrong with that? The problem occurs when obedience to Christ is made into a requirement for eternal salvation. Cheap law preaching ignores the biblical purpose of the law. Cheap law preachers unwittingly commit the error of thinking the law's purpose is to save people from sin. Says Ford, quote, We think that the law is the remedy for sin. If we could just get our act together, we could break the slavery and be free at last, unquote. Certainly, the law can do many good things. It can pres preserve society. It can restrain evil. It can even help us to reach out to give aid beyond our normal reach. It may preserve, restrain, prevent, and so forth. But cure sin? That it can never do. The law is not a remedy for sin. As a matter of fact, 
It just makes sin worse. Unquote. Ultimately, Ford says there are three problems with cheap law preaching. First, Ford says that cheap law preaching commits a Christological error. Properly understood, the law demands perfection. But no one has ever met that demand except for Jesus. But that was the ultimate purpose of the law all along. The law was a tutor to bring us to faith in Christ. Galatians 3.24 He is in the end of the law. He is the end of the law for all who believe. Romans 10.4 Jesus is, quote, the realization and fulfillment of that to which law can only point, unquote, by Ford. But cheap law preaching implicitly denies this Christological end. When grace is made to depend on some performance by the sinner, such as repentance, commitment, or good works, there is an assumption that sinners can meet the law's demand. But that is only possible if the law is made to demand something less than Jesus' perfect righteousness, effectively severing Christ from being the end and purpose of the law. Second, Ford claims that cheap law preaching is a covert form of antinomianism. Antinomianism means being against the law. How can cheap law preaching be against the law if it openly preaches it? Ford distinguishes between two kinds of antinomianism, overt and covert. Overt antinomianism tries to do away with the law entirely. It denies that the law is necessary, even to lead a person to Christ. Clearly, cheap law preachers do qualify as antinomians. But covert antinomianism is a different animal. It doesn't explicitly deny the law, but it changes it. It softens the law's demand in order to better suit the sinner. This is antinomianism in its truest form. Quote, what is antinomianism? After all, in essence, it is a theological attempt to bring the law to heal short of death by some kind of manipulation, overt and covert. If one can't end the law, one seeks to tone it down, to alter it, to apply it casualistically. One disarms the law and makes it into a gentle guide, which we use in our quest for virtue. Thus, domesticated as the house pet of the pious. The law indeed remains, but it has lost its teeth. Unquote by Ford. Third, the preaching a cheap law, by preaching cheap law, one must also preach cheap grace. After all, in order for grace to be cheap, it must cost something. But that itself is the problem. God does not sell his grace. It cannot be had for any price. Rather, he gives it away freely as a gift through faith in his Son. The problem with cheap grace is not that it costs too little, but that it costs anything at all. Ford says, quote, It is not cheap grace. No, it is not cheap, it's free. Cheap grace, you see, is not improved by making it inexpensive. A bargain basement special, 
It's free, unquote. God's grace is free to us. We receive it through faith in Christ's promise, apart from all works. So, Lordship salvation, whether Arminian, Calvinist, or Catholic, is a form of cheap law preaching. It denies Christ by claiming his work must be supplemented by our own efforts if we hope to be saved. It is antinomian because it demands something less than Christ's perfect righteousness, and it preaches cheap grace because it offers grace on the condition of imperfect human works. By contrast, free grace theology unashamedly proclaims a perfect law that could only be fulfilled by Christ, and grace that is freely given without demand to all who believe in Jesus' promise of everlasting life. Free grace, not costly grace, or cheap law, is the true foundation of Christian living. The end. Well, uh, if you're like me, you have uh, heard these slurs against us. Uh, cheap grace, easy believes, believism, greasy grace, all pejoratives to try to slander the truth of this theology that salvation is a free gift with no strings attached. And now we have a wonderful retort. No, we are not preaching uh, cheap grace. We're preaching free grace, absolutely free. But you who are against free grace, you are preaching cheap law. <laughs> cheap law. That's what you believe in. Because if you really believe in the law, following the law is a requirement for salvation, then you would have to follow the law perfectly instead of watering it down the way you do. So I, I love this article. Uh, I hope uh, you benefited from this. And I also urge you to all uh, look at uh, Grace Evangelical Society faithalone.org, and receive their free newsletter, Grace in Focus. So, bless you all. In the name of our great Savior God, his name is Jesus Christ, and he offers everyone eternal life in the kingdom of God as a free gift. All that is required of you is to put your faith completely in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching.